Welcome to Grey Overload, I'm Anthony, and this is a walkthrough of the BIOS of the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming ITX AC motherboard. As you can see here, um, I'm booted up in the BIOS, and it's version 2.20 for this BIOS. So this is supposed to like support the Windows 11 um, installs now, also supports the Ryzen 5000 G series processors as well as the Ryzen 5000. So as you see, I got the Ryzen 7 5700G with Radeon graphics. It also has 32 gigs of RAM, and this is the main page that you'll boot up to in the BIOS. To get into here, you can press press delete. If you don't have a drive in like I do, you will get this page when the computer starts up. So let's just walk through this. You can see we can go over to Overlock Overclock Tweaker OC Tweaker, and you can also click on it. Use a mouse. I am a keyboard person for the most part in the in the bios and so you can see you can you know switch your bus mode your cpu frequency your soc um overclock mode i'm just keeping all these auto you can feel free to go in and change all these um dram information in fact uh, you can go in here and kind of see all the information uh, this is just some ram i have lying around so it does have one xmp profile as you can see there and I will be using that. Um, this was one of the reasons why I bought the um, bought these parts is because I had RAM lying around. So we'll put that profile on there. So we get uh, XMP 3200 Infin Infin Infinity Fabric there, DRAM timings and configurations. In fact, you can go in there and mess with all that fun stuff. And then internal external voltage. Or external virtual settings. Wow, where to get internal? Um, it also has profiles as you see here. You can go through. You can save user defaults, load user defaults, save to a USB, load from a USB drive. I think that's some pretty cool stuff that ASRock has included in here. I'm going off of what I remember from Gigabyte and MSI, and it seems as at least with MSI they have a little bit more. Um, well roundedness in here I don't remember them having a load but let's just go through into advanced now you have the CPU configuration gives you a little bit about my processor as you can see here what the max speed is all that fun stuff it has your uh, PSS support um, as well as your NXMO which is your no executable page protection function your vir SVM is your virtualization um, which is also enabled SMT mode, which is uh, multi-threading that's enabled and your FTPM switch, which is enabled, which is one of the requirements for Windows 11. And that's all in the CPU configuration. You can go to PCI configuration and let's say you want resizable bar um, support or your above 4G decoding. I believe that's required for resizable bar. And then this one has um, your virtualization your PCI device I'm gonna keep that disabled I do not have the above 4 gig decoding or resizable bar this is just using integrated graphics but I'm guessing if you're not using integrated graphics this is enabled and you can do that that would uh, also enable your SAM support I believe um, I wish I could try it out I don't have uh, a graphic that can support SAM so I don't get that option um, or I haven't been able to test that out Onboard devices. So this is your LEDs when they turn on. I'm in the Node 304 Fractal Design or Fractal uh, Node 304, which you can't see the inside, and it's also Plex box. So I don't really care about the lights in this guy. So you can see you can turn them on and off. Your RGBs on and off. You, this is your UMA frame buffer, which is for your graphics. So you can see you can go up to two gigs. Really wish AMD would kind of uh, make that go above two gigs, maybe four as well that'd be pretty cool and then you have your front panel audio what do you want to do when you restore after AC power loss I want it to power on and then your WAN radio Wi-Fi and then your Bluetooth as well you have storage configuration here as you see I have no drives currently for your um, for SATA ports so I won't have any until I swap everything out of the other system. So, ACPI configuration. So, this is kind of like your sleep, 
which is a lot of auto stuff, so suspend deep sleep, uh, suspend RAM, PCI devices when they power on, or when, if they're allowed to power on um, the device, or even alarm. Trusted computing, you're probably not going to touch much in here, but this is a lot of your TPM stuff, for or all your TPM stuff, besides where it was before the CPU configuration. And this is a lot of stuff Microsoft is now requiring for Windows 11. Uh, again, this would probably would not be disabled or would be disabled on earlier BIOS versions than the ones now that support for Windows 11 across many different BIOS platforms. It's just what Microsoft is moving to. I can see, you know, using it. I don't see Microsoft requiring it just to get Windows 11. That's something else. But a lot of devices have had that for a while and they're still cutting those off. But we can go into AMD. PBS and so this is kind of you can go through and see the firmware versions this is um, their Aegis versioned um, was it 1.2.0.3c so you can kind of see the firmware you know this is a Cezanne vBIOS firmware version I like this I like that they are able to put this information out it's one thing that I haven't seen a lot with other uh, um, BIOS manufacturers, I don't remember seeing this in Gigabyte or in MSI. I will be able to check out an ASUS board here soon um, as well. But let's just jump into your graphics features. You can see here, you can uh, decide if you want, whoops, my bad. You can go into here, graphics features, and decide if you have on internal or external graphics. Even though it says external, it will boot to internal if there's no external there. I'm just going to keep it like that so it sticks and sticks with that as if I were to ever go to a different version. Here it is. It's just going to jump over to the external one. I don't have to reconfigure the BIOS here and try to figure out what's going on. But because it's a Plex server, I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem of me switching over. You have your PCI lanes, so you can switch it. Um, by 16 is fine because that's all I got. And then you have your RAID mode which is disabled and then you have your I'm guessing your voltage and your SOC voltage here if you want to adjust that manually AMD overclocking you can go through manual overclocking precision boost overdrive which is on auto AMD CBS and then you can go here your perp core performance, you know, your C-state controls, your fast, um, short, a lot of these stuff doesn't even have uh, help strings, well, or description is no help string, <laughs> and there, I'm sure if you're doing a lot more overclocking, a lot more tuning, you're going to jump into these and know way more than I know about these as well. Common options, your security here, memory module stuff, graphics and stuff, audio stuff, SMU options. Then you can go through what the active page is and if you want UEFI. So being on main is fine for me and auto is good. So let's jump over to tools. You have your RGB LED stuff. And this could actually be off because I can't see it, so why keep it on? And apply to all channels and save. Whoops, my bad, I jumped out of there. And then easy RAID installer. I'm not going to even click on this. Well, I can. Well, you have to please insert support CD. Okay. SSD erase tool. NVMe sanitize tool. I don't have an NVMe drive or an SSD in there, so there you go. Instant flash. If you are going to update your BIOS, you can go through and uh, use this. So it's going to give you a warning. It is recommending you disable FTPM before updating the BIOS. Otherwise, a uh, failure could occur. This is going to have to get better, Azrock. Um, 
I'm guessing everyone's going to run across this, right? You going through and disabling and enabling is something that uh, we're going to have to get around and iron out as more and more people that are going to want to upgrade their BIOS as well as get support for Windows 11 if that's something what people want to jump to and they want to get new features of CPUs or su support for CPUs jumping through all this stuff it should be more streamlined especially when you're going and you know you're flashing the BIOS so um, I'm not going to continue because I don't have any BIOS to update but uh, this is where you go to do it then you go through the fan here it says 61 degrees Celsius 31 in the motherboard I really kind of want to see why it's so high. That'll be something once I get the computer loaded up and test it out. Fan configuration, you can uh, see the fan here. It's on silent mode. Uh, uh, which one? CPU fan setting one. Oh, that's a chassis fan. Okay. Fantastic. This is your fan curve stuff. And then you can select that to monitor and switch it all up. And you can use the mouse in here. Always remember, they have mouse support in these newer BIOS, which is pretty cool. And fan tuning. I am not going to touch it. click on this. It takes three to five minutes. And they're right. It takes three to five minutes. And I'm sure you nor I want to sit through a three to five minutes of watching them do a little, you know, checking of the fans. I did that last time, last time I tried to record this video. And uh, I ended up stopping it because I ran out of things to say about the screen I was looking at because I couldn't click on anything else. So uh, if you want a password, you can go into security stuff. Wait, is there anything else? In my, no. So back to security. If the, Security stuff, you can have a password for this, a user password, and you have your secure boot. So those passwords are to get into the BIOS and edit them, secure boot. I believe Microsoft's going to want this enabled for their uh, Windows 11 stuff. So we'll, I, I will put it in the description below if you need to do anything for this or if it's all good to go. Then you have you know, your onboard LAN um, stuff if you go to boot. Timeout, uh, fast boot, all that stuff. Um, CMS compatibility modules, add on full screen logo, all that stuff. And then you have your exit, so you can load, launch UFSL from the file system. You can load from the BIOS defaults, discard changes, discard and exit, or you can save changes, which I'm going to do. So. You hit save and exit, you will ask you if you want to save, click yes, and then it's going to reboot. And uh, as you see here, it's just going and rebooting the system, but it'll be back up into my BIOS here as soon as it comes back, hopefully. Don't want to kill the board right now, but that's a walkthrough of the BIOS of this ASRock board for AMD. It's a uh, pretty... Uh, Pretty interesting board so far. I like it so far. It's got a 2.5 gig NIC on here. And let me know if you have any questions about the BIOS. I'll be sure to try to answer them um, as well. So with that, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for taking the time to help support Gray or Lone and helping this channel grow. I really appreciate it and everything you guys do. Until next time, don't forget to like. God bless and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.